zoning appeals. The time is 7.02 p.m. and the date is Tuesday, July 14, 2020. At this time, I will call the meeting to order. The board consists of five members and two alternates. The alternates taking full part in the discussions and becoming a voting member in the absence of a member or when a member abstains for conflict of interest. Uh, present tonight are Ms. Lisa Carson, Mr. Joe Cross, Ms. Kate Housley, Ms. Kate, yeah, I see Tay, and uh, the alternates, uh, is Mr. Aaron Thomas here yet? No, not yet. No. So, Mr. Robert Dulac, uh, you would be a voting member tonight uh, in the absence of Mr. John Goodekinst. Uh, I am John Golzi, the chair. We also have present uh, the zoning administrator, Mr. David Riggs, and secretary, Mr. Paul Eschenbacher. And of course, we have the folks from the government channel, uh, Scott and Ryan, I wanna thank you for all you do. Uh, at this time, I'm going to read the Board of Zoning Operation Procedure. The board operates according to the following procedure. The chair will name the uh, case and describe it. The zoning administrator or secretary will state the basis of the objection and any applicable facts or conditions pertaining to the case. The appellant or their representative will give reason why the appeal should be viewed favorably. Anyone wishing to speak in favor of the request will be heard. Anyone wishing to speak in general comment will be heard. Anyone wishing to speak in opposition will be heard. If necessary, the appellant or the representative will offer concluding summary or rebuttal remarks. Testimony from the uh, floor will be closed. The board will deliberate and render a decision. According to the Athens City Code Section 230703B, the board has power to grant variances uh, from the strict application of the code provided the variance will not be contrary to the public interest. The spirit of the code is observed. Public safety and welfare are secured and substantial justice is done. According to the Athens City Code Section 230710C, variances from the code shall not be granted unless the board makes a specific findings of fact based directly on the particular evidence presented to it that the standards and conditions imposed in this title, if applicable, have been met by the application or the applicant. There are six criteria, and I'm just gonna mention the title and later on we will uh, read the complete sentences for each one of these. These are the findings that we will be looking for. Exceptional circumstances, a practical difficulty and undue hardship, preservation of equal property rights, minimum variance, absence of detriment, and not of a general nature. Any person, resident or officer, department or appointed body of the city of Athens aggrieved by a decision of the board may petition the Athens County Court of Common Pleas concerning the illegality of the decision. A such petition must be filed within 30 days after the mailing of the decision of the board to the applicant. Uh, there are two cases on tonight's agenda and this is the order we are going to hear them. Uh, case number one is the property at 102 Mill Street. Uh, this was actually continued from the last month. And the second case would be 18 North Schaefer Street. The board is required to take testimony under oath. 
Would anyone wishing to speak concerning any item on the agenda? Uh, please unmute your speakers or uh, your microphone and then uh, answer yes or no. Do you swear or affirm that any testimony you will present to the board will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I don't hear yeah. any yes or no, but I assume that you all do. And we are under the assumption that any appellant or the representative who are testifying uh, are under oath. And I may repeat that just to clarify. Okay, let's go to case number one. The case number is 20-7V102 Mill Street. Ms. Alice Laley is the appellant. And we heard the case last month completely. And if I could just summarize, um, there was a couple of emails and the records from the chief of police and the fire chief that they had concerns about the fence. And in fact, uh, if I could find the documents, uh, the chief of police actually had mentioned uh, his opposition uh, strongly is right here, Mr. Tom Pyle, the chief of police, uh, says we are definitely opposed to the front set of uh, the, the fencing in this area. And the fire chief uh, had echoed uh, Chief Pyle's comments and added that it also it depends on the size, location, uh, relative to the structure, uh, and so forth, permanence, uh, height, opening, etc. So the way we left it last time was for Ms. Bailey to contact the chief of police and then the fire chief to uh, see what they thought about the new proposal. And my first question goes to Mr. Uh, Eschenbacher or Mr. Riggs, the code office. Uh, have we heard back from the chief of police and chief of uh, the fire chief uh, regarding this case at all? Uh, good evening, everybody. This is David Riggs uh, with the uh, co-director of the City of Athens Code Office. I did talk to the chief of police and to the fire chief. Um, I think Ms. Whaley, uh, when she explained the uh, extent of the fence and uh, the height and the size of the fence, I think that uh, alleviated both of the chief's concerns and they at this point don't uh, are not opposed to a fence at this address. Okay, thank you, sir. Well, uh, Ms. Bailey, uh, just for the reference, uh, go ahead and, and state your name and address for the records. And then uh, let us, uh, what you found out. Okay, so my name is Alice Bailey, and the property um, in question is 102 Mill Street, where I live. I am a not renting, I am not a tenant, it belongs to my family. Um, so I met with, uh, yes, I did meet with um, um, Chief Pyle. Actually, I called Chief Reimer, uh, the fire chief, and he said, oh, actually, I, I hadn't... <laughs> It was a little, uh, he hadn't directly um, apparently objected. It, it was, um, I guess, Mr. Riggs who had referenced an earlier case um, and suggested it might to be the fire chief. Um, you know, he was, he was referencing 118 mil and so forth, an earlier case. Um, but um, Chief Reimer didn't say he had any specific objections. I would note that 118 mil. First of all, I'm building a, a, a different, a, probably a different fence than 118 in mill. As I have said before, I am going to replace it with a, I don't know if you can see this, but it's completely plain. There are no, spi right now there are these sort of ornamental spiky things on top. This is going to be completely flat on top, nothing sharp, nothing sticking up, no ornamentation. So not, you know, you think of as a wrought iron fence, no, just you know, the plainest possible thing um, that 
I think would look a, a little bit better than a chain link fence, but you know, it has no ornamentation. So it, it wasn't going to be like that anyway. The other thing is that 118 mill is across from a fire hydrant. It, the, the fire hydrants are all on the other side of the street. They're not on, on Mill Street. They're not on my, the side where our house is. They're across the street. But my house is not directly across from a, um, a fire hydrant. And one, 118 mill is essentially across the street. So um, I think in any case, the issue of hoses would be very different for our house because we're not near, um, nearly as close to a fire hydrant. Um, so, but he, but I said, as I said, Chief Reimer didn't actually object. It was a, sort of a suggestion that he might um, object. I did meet with Chief Reimer in person. I asked him why he thought a fence might be a cut risk to a horse, because that was referenced before. And he, he said that they used to have these, um, like, it was like orange plastic fences with stakes. And I guess maybe a horse had gotten injured on one of, you know, during these parties. Well, as I said before, it's not going to be anything like this. This is a very plain, you know, just no spikes, nothing sticking up, no ornamentation, plain, plain, plain. So, and it's only two and a half feet. So I, uh, when I gave him a picture of this and I said, yeah, there's not going to be any spiky things sticking up, um, that um, he said, well, you know, no, I have no more objection that in that case, you know. Okay, uh, so we are going the, to. Okay, the height uh, and the style to. addressed those issues, and also the location of the house relative those issues relative. To okay. The okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, we're going to oh, note going that to. the height is going to be two and a half feet, and this is metal. Is this a? Uh, it is metal. Or is it wood? It's supposed is it? to be aluminum, okay. but spray okay. painted black. You know, but as you can see, it's very, very plain. No, no, no spiky things. No, um, no ornamentation. Just okay. Uh, since you did not well, speak um, to both chiefs, uh, uh, so. Maybe we are going to possibly, I'm going to suggest that maybe we uh, put the condition that if, if we grant the variance, we'd be subject to the review by the uh, both of uh, chief of police and uh, fire department, you know. So uh, we are going to do our job. Uh, and then uh, what happens next, you know, if, if there is some more objections and then that uh, you will have to address it with the city of Athens, okay? Okay. All right. Um, any questions from the board? So I got a quick question. So basically the, the police chief issued a statement saying they were against the fence, against the variance. Was that from the police chief? Yes, initially. Initially, okay. He's, he's changed his mind. He no longer objects to the fence, neither does the fire chief. Okay. Okay. Any other question? Okay. I think we have heard about the case completely last time. Uh, Ms. Bailey, is there anything else you want to say before we close the discussions from the floor? Um, I was a bit concerned about the, um, I think it was you who brought up the issue of um, this has to do with the nature of the property, not the nature of the behavior of the people who live in the neighborhood, um, something like that. Um, and, and, the, and the nature of the fact that I'm, I have a child, I'm watching elderly people, I can't be on the same schedule as, you know, everyone else who are partying students. And um, nowadays, these partying students, also a lot of them own dogs. That was the real. Yeah, I can basically deal with noise because the police can, you know, if it gets too bad, uh, too late, they can usually address that. But you, you really can't do anything about people not picking up after their dog, um, you know, unless you stay there all day and watch the front. Yes, which, yes. Uh, so, what I was um, saying last time yeah. was that. Go ahead. Yeah, what, what I was saying last time was that um, you may be selling the house the next day, you know, tomorrow or maybe next year. <laughs> no, but, I wish, well, but no. You know, uh, that's a possibility. <laughs> no. But what I'm saying that the variance is given to the property. Right. Uh, okay. So, so not the to property, the specific person. I would say, yes, the nature of the property 
the magnificent issue is, the, is especially its location. It is yeah. in the middle, uh, has enormous amount of foot traffic in the back. That's one reason, I'm sorry, in the front. That's one reason why, unlike a lot of people in Athens who don't care that much about their front, fencing their front yard, but do want to fence their backyard, I yeah. have the opposite problem. The, the uh, I understand. It's not a problem. It's an enormous amount of foot traffic. Um, right. It's very close to the university, and it's very close to the bars. So, you know, it's constantly... Um, you know, young people not from the area, not very respectful of locals, unfortunately. And the dogs are the last straw because, like I yes. say, I, I can sort of deal. Yeah, with, I understand. You know, I understand. Yeah, I understand. So and is, uh, is, again, you know, this is a, a fence. It's not allowed in this thing, but we are we are trying to hear the case and based on the what we hear and based on the evidence, so we make uh, grant or not grant the variance. So that's uh, basically what we are doing tonight. Any final questions for the appellant or any comments uh, before I go to asking someone to make a motion? Um, I have something for a point of clarification. Uh, I think it was mentioned last time that if we were to pass this, it might still need a some kind of permit for the right of way use. That's correct. It'll need a revocable license from city council. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. So it would still need a revocable license. That's our understanding at this point. That's so correct. There's another layer of approval, really. For yeah. This. If this gets approved tonight, Miss Whaley needs to come to the code office and fill out a Title 49 or revocable license application. She fills it out here, and then we pass it on to City Council for their review. I would like to add about the right of way. As I've pointed out before, I, I read the case that I have a problem with. I, I sympathize with this man because he wanted to fence his, keep fence his yard because he has a kid and a dog, and he wanted to keep them in, and like me, who wants to keep dog owners with, you know, who are disrespectful and don't pick up out. Um, but you know he was granted a, a a variance that he that interferes completely with the pedestrian right of way so people now have to walk in the street if they're going by his house my um the right of way in concern is not at all the sidewalks are completely free the utilities are completely unfenced they're completely accessible to anyone who would need them. The only so-called right-of-way has to do with, you know, if in, you know, a hundred years they decide to widen Mill Street, you know, they're going to want that property. And I say, great. In fact, if you want to widen Mill Street next year, I say, great, because then the, then the you know, the street would come up, I can move the fence. It's all about trying to um, keep as much of the dog crap out of the front as I can, you know. So the right of way, you know, is something. the The right of way is not a pedestrian one. It's simply the theoretical possibility that someday the street will be widened, and so therefore, car and the the sidewalks be moved, and cars will be closer to the house. And I have uh, no problem with that. I understand why that needs to be revocable. You know, I've, I've, uh, <laughs> I'm not trying to you know, grab property or something like that. I am, I simply see what happens when when, play, when fences are far back from you, the sidewalk. Miss Whaley, you them. you'll still need to get a revocable license. <laughs> yeah, I you still have to apply for one. Right. Uh, so uh, please uh, please work out with the code office on that because that's not the part if it's we passed, are involved in. Um, yeah, if it's passed. So, um, anyone to, um, Rob, did you want to make a motion? When I saw your picture, I thought maybe you were going to go make a motion. <laughs> uh, may I suggest two things uh, about the motion? Number one, that you include as a condition that the fence can't be any higher than 30 inches. And also, Is since she wants yeah. to put the since she wants to put the fence across the entire front yard that instead of announcing the address as 102 mil that you would announce it as 100 and 102 mil that way the fence can go across both sides of the duplex there yeah although it's not a duplex but i get your point 
Absolutely. Yeah. You know, obviously they need to know both addresses are there. It's not a duplex, yeah. by the way. You cannot, there's no, you can't have another unit in the other side. Yeah. There's no bathing, there's no kitchen. But, Ms. Whaley, that was instructions for the zoning board. Yeah. So whoever gets the motion, if you could put the condition about the height and uh, the correction of the address. Right. Yeah. Right. To make it more complete, accurate. Okay, Mr. Delac, you still want to make a motion? <laughs> uh, if I can figure out how to word it, we'll see. Uh, I think I have some idea, but I haven't. I move. You will start with I move to grant I'm a variance. To grant a variance. From? From. Um, and read the rest of it. From, from the ACC. Hmm, from ACC okay. 2303. Move to move to grant a variance from ACC 23-03.14 to allow a fence in front of the setback where a fence is not permitted. Um, the appellant uh, is requesting this for 102 Mill Street, case number 20-07V. With the condition? Yes, with the condition? The condition of the fence not being more than 30 inches in height of the fence not being more than 30 inches in height. And? And uh, the, if a review by the police chief and fire chief uh, uh, determines that this is not something they agree to allow, then... Uh, okay, subject to their review. Subject to review. Yeah. Um, is that this okay, is, Mr. Reschenbacher? And this is for 100 and 102 mil. Okay, yeah, I've got that. Right. Do yeah, that need a second? Do we have a second? A second. Okay, okay. Ms. Carson, second. And uh, I'm going to go over the findings. And uh, Mr. Thomas, I see you are here. Welcome. Uh, we assigned uh, Mr. Delac to be the uh, voting member for the first case. Uh, because you were not present at the time, and maybe you can vote on the next uh, next uh, case. Exceptional circumstances. There are exceptional or extraordinary circumstances on conditions applying. Is it okay? Is are you okay, Mr. Reschenbacher? Yeah, I'm just listening. Oh, okay. I'm writing this down. So go okay. ahead, okay. please. Go ahead. Okay, there are exceptional or extraordinary circumstances or conditions applying to the property in question or to the intent use of the property that do not apply generally to other properties or classes or uses in the same zone. Is there any exceptional circumstances with respect to the property? Not the issues that has been stated with regard to the noise or dogs and so forth. Anyone? I have a location. hard time I'm getting head around this one. I can get from two perspectives. I don't know uh, if, if the fact that the property is student neighborhood. Can you hear me? No, yeah. we can tell it's K. Am I? being heard go ahead yes yeah it can use case because i'm not sure that the fact that the property is located in a student neighborhood um, meets the requirement of an unusual aspect of the property itself hmm. I think a case could be made for that. And I think that there are people who uh, occupy family homes in neighborhoods that become eventually um, occupied almost entirely by renters. And I think that does create issues for those homeowners. Um, and that's where their property is. I think I agree with Lisa on this. Any others? Yeah, I think I agree with Lisa. Yeah. Okay. A practical difficulty and undue hardship because of exceptional or extraordinary circumstances or conditions pertaining to 
to a specific piece of property, a literal enforcement of these regulations will result in practical difficulty or undue hardship that is unnecessary to the achievement of public purposes. Are we creating a hardship by not granting the variance to this piece of property? I think yes, if, if we accept the premise that being located in a student neighborhood um, is an exceptional circumstance, then yes, having dogs uh, constantly defecating in front of the house, having um, intoxicated students uh, run through, through the property and cut through the property, uh, I think is um, something you wouldn't want to have happen. Well, are those uh, hardships to the use of the property or are they hardships to the actual property? You know, a property maybe is, uh, doesn't have enough area to put a garage in there. So that might be a hardship, you know, but the, the property is there. We are talking about a hardship to the use of the property for the current owners. Would that consider as what we are finding here? That's my question. In my opinion, it would. I think that if we can't give relief to a resident who is asking only to put up a fence, to have some protection and privacy uh, in a neighborhood where that is very hard to find, that strikes me as a reasonable thing. And it's not clear to me why, how it's in the interest of the code or the community to refuse uh the construction of a fence there well i mean that could be many many cases for all the people in athens and maybe they will be i mean maybe then they should be allowed to put up fences maybe there should be a change to code i i know that if i lived there i would want to have a fence just the minimum variance i think because of the height uh, and then uh, yeah. i think it's minimal do you all agree? Yes. Absence of detriment. The authorizing of such variance will not be of substantial detriment to the adjacent property and will not materially impair the purpose of the zoning code or the public interest. Uh, I recall, I don't know whether I read this or not, there was a letter uh, or email from Mr. Andrew Vogt, V-O-G-T, uh, from the yeah, Athens yeah. Insurance Services, uh, who is a neighbor, and he had opposed to the uh, fence. So we have that email in the records. He did send it, John. He did send it in June, though, right? When it was when Alice's old proposal was, was a different fence. But Mr. Vote yeah. also wanted to make sure that his letter was still considered for the july part of the meeting he still wanted to submit his letter of objection from june right. uh, he he's objecting to the current fence i'm there. sorry ma'am you cannot just speak right uh, now so we, we are we are we have closed the discussion from the meeting thanks so it does seem that his letter is complaining about the current fence that's true. Not so much about a new fence, but. Yes, because the new fence is not being made from a couple of different fences and mm -hmm. it does not lack uniformity. It's totally uniform. And the also second point follows that. So it's really, he's really talking about the existing fence. And if just putting something up like that would be a problem, he doesn't like it she's not doing that any longer it's going to be okay. a, an improved fence okay and not of a general nature the condition or situation of the specific piece of property or the intended use of this property uh, for which variance is south one or the other or in combination is not of so general or recurrent in nature as to make a reasonably practicable the formulation the formulation of a general regulation for such condition or situation i my answer is no right 
Okay, are we ready to vote? Uh, please um, unmute your microphones. I'm going to call the names individually, and then you say either yes or no. Uh, Ms. Carson? Yes. Uh, Mr. Cross? No. Oh, Ms. Housley? Yes. Uh, Mr. Dulac? Yes. Okay, uh, I think you have three yeses. I will vote no as well. Uh, so, but you have the variance uh, three to two. Okay. Okay, let's go to the second uh, case. The second case is not a variance, is a conditional use permit. I sent all the members uh, an email this afternoon with the attachment about uh, what the uh, this conditional use is. It's, it's actually a permanent variance, but we attach um, we attach some conditions to it. Uh, am I correct, Mr. Reschenbacher? In well, that you you don't have to. It's called a conditional use, but you don't have to attach conditions to it. You can yes, yes, read it verbatim for from uh, the yeah from the do. part E. Okay, this is case number 20-8C. Uh, the property is at 18 North Schaefer Street. Uh, zone is B1. Umbrella of Athens LLC is the appellant. And um, appellant is requesting a conditional use permit to allow a bed and breakfast use in a B1 zone as per ACC 230404B3. Uh, Mr. Reschenbacher or Mr. Riggs, uh, either one of you, uh, if you could remember, maybe Mr. Reschenbacher, you can remember. Uh, was Did we have a case for the same bed and breakfast on uh, across from the Miller's Chicken a while back? Yes. Uh, on maybe that. 220? It was a year ago. Maybe 226 was, West the State Street? I think so. Check here. Yeah. Yeah. It was exactly yeah. uh, okay. last year. Yeah. It was last year this time. Yeah. There was a request for uh, uh, a bed and breakfast in that building. I recall uh, saying that the house maybe wasn't big enough for at the time for a bed and breakfast. And I remember Mr. Eschenbacher said that it's much bigger than what you think. It was 220 West so, Yeah, 220. Was okay. Right. And it was denied. Okay, this this piece of property is uh, just within the block from uh, from the proposed uh, case. And then, um, what is the latest uh, for the code office? What is the latest on B and B in Athens? Hmm. Any what new you have here, what you're dealing with as far as the law is concerned, that it's a conditional yeah. use that's allowed in this zone. Okay, there hasn't been any new. Uh, ordinances or anything that I know of, right? Not in reference to this case, no. Okay, okay, great. So, any questions for the code office? And now, um, is uh, do we have a representative for this case? Hi. Hello. Um, I don't know if you swore in or not, but uh, yes, please, state, please state your name and your address and that you are on the road. So go ahead. Uh, Eric Lee, 51 Madison Avenue in Athens, Ohio. Allie Lee, same address. Okay. And we are and, here on the road. And your case. You can say whatever you like. Thank you. I mean, we have Thanks. read your letter. We have read your uh, request. But if there is something you want to add to it, this is a good time right now. Well, first of all, thank you, thank you for having us. I'm sorry our little guy is probably going to be fussy. We'll try to keep him calm. Um, we, uh, is, we're is he on the road? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Not of the age of majority, probably. Swear, swear him in. Swear him in. <laughs> 
Um, so yes, um, as John said, we are asking for um, the conditionally permitted use of an Airbnb on our property, um, which has historically been a rental property on the west side. Um, we, as a couple, um, buy and improve properties. We um, have done a few in town that we have flipped. Um, and we're hoping to make this a, a nice addition to the west side. Um, what would you like to add? Um, I would like to point out that we are in a, a, a business zone, and I believe the property that came up last year was in a residential zone. Um, so there are distinct differences in the zoning laws. So we are conditionally approved in our business zone, whereas I think the other property was an R3, which isn't conditionally approved. I could be wrong about that, but I believe there's a difference there. Yeah, um, we have a few before and after photos of the property. We bought it last fall um, and have um, done some inside and outside improvements to the place to try to bring it up from what it was to something that can be um, of benefit to the neighborhood. Including a lot of health and safety improvements, um, which is removing the uh, wiring. Um, so we are responsible owners. Oh, I was there this afternoon. Sorry, go ahead. I was there this afternoon that you're talking about that green and white house right in the corner. Right in the corner, yeah. It's right. now green. It used to be it used to be yeah, okay. terrible white. Um yeah. Okay. It's good to have a middle. I, I do think I just kind of a, I just glanced around it, you know. Is there a parking space over there? I didn't see any. Yes, um we have five it, there is five in the back. Spaces. Yeah, there are five spots. Okay. Um, and there is it's it's on an alleyway, so there you can drive right through. It's not um, kind of one entrance to the parking. And it okay. doesn't block traffic to pull it around. Okay. Any questions from the board members? Joe, you are showing on the screen. Do you have a question? No. Okay. <laughs> No questions? Okay. Um, I have uh, one, John, if you can pull up for a second. Go ahead. Sure. Um, so I'm not a stickler for parking, minimum parking requirements generally, but it would be good maybe to know how that applies here. So I'm assuming that the rental had, sound like it had 12 bedrooms, so it would have been required by by code to have, I believe, 12 parking spaces or close It was to a grant, Mr. Dulac, it was a grandfathered rental property. Exactly. The, that's it, that's my the, point. it used to have three units as a rental building. And back when it became a rental, it was only one space per unit instead of one space per person. So it has legal non-conforming parking as a rental unit. Since they're changing it to a bed and breakfast, they will have to conform with current parking regulations. And that's exactly what I was getting at. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, and Bob, then, uh, gen generally, when uh, when the parking is not an issue in the statement of the case, that pretty much means that, you know, it's been taken care of by the code office. So they probably yeah. we shouldn't be concerned. You know, we just want to stick to whatever is at our hand. Right I, had a, uh, I had a but question, question to Paul. I had a question to Paul. Was that that last case was that what zone was that the one across from miller's chicken the uh, case from last uh, year because it was literally right around the corner when i went on to look yes say, that's yeah let me see because that was the issue from last time was the zoning not necessarily the purpose but the zoning i'm almost positive it was an r1 zone okay we've got the map up we're trying it's r1 <laughs> yeah, 220 West State is in an R1. Thank you. And Mr. Eschenbacher, would it make a difference as in terms of the zoning, whether it was R1 or B2 or B1? Yes, uh, because uh, for the under current of... policy, bed and breakfasts aren't allowed in R1. Oh, okay. That's right. Okay. And is it my understanding that they are permitted in, in the, the B, B1 zone? As a conditional use, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, um, any I other have, questions? I have a question. Sure. I wasn't here for that meeting, and I just wonder if anyone knows if if it was um, the R1 zone, if that was the reason that you all denied them, or if anyone remembers what the reasons were. 
I do remember Lisa, and that was the reason. Okay. That was to me, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I think we have covered. I have in here a few letters. One is uh, by the appellants. They have mentioned in 10 rules that they are going to apply to this Airbnb. This is a sample air sickly, uh, no parties or events. And then uh, uh, noise ordinances are in effect between the hours of 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. and then 12 a.m. Uh, to 7 a.m. Uh, during the weekends. And then no smoking in apartment and so on. Then there's a few other rules that are uh, basically no pets and so forth. Then I have in here the letter of support um, dated July 13 is signed by um, Mr. Philip W. Lee. And they are basically, they are approving of this uh, application and so on. Um, is a letter of support. And I believe I received an email uh, that I uh, shared with everyone. Um, and this was done by uh, Christine Robinson. Do you all have that email? I believe I forwarded, it came uh, Monday, yesterday. The letter from Ryan Wilson. To whom? Uh, I am writing this letter in favor of the owners of the property located at 18 North Schaefer Street, near Lee. Uh, they mentioned how they are seeking approval, Airbnb, the property out and having uh, known them for several years, now both as friends and landlords and they are an excellent example who should develop the website. Um, I, as a West Side myself, and, and would love to see uh, some more of created such as this one, as I believe it would bring more business into the West Side. Allowing this would be a huge step in making Athens a better place for visitors and residents like uh, signed uh, Ryan. Wilson. So along that line, I just have a question. Does the uh, list of properties adjoining this, are those owners uh, asked by the code office if they have any concerns? Are all we, of them just, we just send them a letter of notification of the meeting. We don't say they have to respond or anything, just that they're notified. And that's my next step in here. Uh, we're going to go and find out anyone wishing to speak in favor of this uh, variance. If if you are available, if you are online, it, please unmute your microphone and and state your uh, approval. Or is there anyone wishing in a general comment? Could be okay. heard now. That's me. <laughs> I'm Lois Harkins. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Thank you. And I'm still under oath. Uh, please, please address, uh, give us your address. My husband, Bill, and I live at 12 North Schaefer Street. We own the property at 16 North Schaefer Street. And we have okay. been impressed with the nice improvements the couple has made. Um, it does. It's bringing a little spark to our little end of the street. Uh, the only concern that we have is safety and parking. Um, I've lived on... Schaefer Street for 45 years, and I've watched that street change a number of times. Um, I'm hopeful that you get renters that stay a long time. I think that would be quite the way to go. Uh, a couple of issues about the 12 parking places. There's really only five, and for the couple, I want to alert you to parking place number five. Since we've lived here the longest, we realize that that does not actually have foundation under it. It has a great deal of gravel. So we've actually been called by tenants to come over and help pull their truck out of parking spot number five. So please be very careful. They'll either go into our fence or your backyard. So be very cautious about that. Thank you. Or you're welcome. And parking spot number one, 
if you don't put some sort of a barrier or paint a line, people will try to park right next to the curb. So any of the traffic coming up that alley cannot see out, which brings me to the safety factor of that intersection. There's no crosswalk. There used to be a light. We don't need a light anymore, but it is a dangerous intersection. Um, my husband actually was hit by a car when he was walking back from Miller's one day. A person unfamiliar with the area cut the corner short and hit him. When I ride my bicycle, I get off my bike and I wave everybody past. So then I can take the bike across the street and I've almost been hit. So please, with whatever tenants you have, alert them to that factor. Um, the alley is an interesting little alley in Athens. If you've not been down it, please do drive down there. When I first moved here, the building that Kevin Klein owns in the back that has three units, 12 bedrooms, 12 parking places, that um, he has that unit and they have those parking places, beads and things park in the back, we park in the back, we build a garage, um, a couple of houses, on West State, I'm sorry, yes, uh, West uh, Washington, they park in the back, and also the Cider House Apartments park in the back. So it's a well-trafficked area now, and if you only have five parking places, I'm not sure where everyone's going to go. Um, Schaefer Street now has Stu Mac that has turned into a marvelous building. They've increased the number of parking places, but it's not enough, so they park on the street. You have Tavolitos, Beads and Things, the Cider House, and even some of Miller's parking or Miller Slope park there. They park and they block the um, steps going down. Well, that's another thing you'll need to watch out for. Your little steps going down from 18. They'll park in front of that and you can't get to the street. So be cautious there. Um, what we end up doing if we're trying to cross that street is walk on the retaining wall because they blocked it. And then you jump down between the cars to try to get across the street. So parking, uh, we want you to be successful. We would like you to have parking places for everyone. And we want all of the reviews that you get from people to be positive ones. And so we we're, we're, want to look out for you there. Um, I think that's all I have to say. We were just concerned about the parking and, uh, yeah, welcome. Thank you all much. right. Uh, thank you. Uh, would the appellants address the questions that came up? Did you ask me a question and I, I missed it? No, no, I'm asking the appellants if they could respond to you. Oh, okay. oh um, um, I really appreciate knowing about uh, the parking issues. Um, I'll definitely talk to my contractor. Uh, we were talking about building up the stairs a little bit better there and resupporting that retaining wall to kind of help with some of that. The uh, help with the parking. Um, and then uh, it probably has nothing to do with, with what's before us right now. But as of right now, um, we have uh, a, a basically two families in the unit right now uh, mm -hmm. with, with, young, with young kids. So we're, we're, I mean, I have nothing against student rentals. Um, I was a student once myself. Um, but as of now, it, it's, it's more family than, than students. And um, um, hopefully th at the end of this week or next, uh, Keith is going to uh, be starting on a mural on that as well. Keith Wild. Um, so we're trying to make it uh, kind of tie the neighborhood together. Um, and because of Stumac's awesome renovation, we want to we want to keep that up. I have a question. Uh, and the question is that are you going to have like one family or one party at a time, or are you going to have different parties at the same time in this Airbnb? Uh, so you're talking about in, in an individual unit? Are you going well, to have more than one person? Yeah, I don't know how this exactly works, but could you have like two different parties be staying at your place at the same time? Uh, we would have to look into it. Um, one of the things that we have been talking about, but we haven't run numbers for, um, is with, with the amount of COVID cases in Athens getting worse and worse and worse, we were talking about because, because of its proximity to the hospital, potentially doing um, pretty much an at-cost um, lodging for people, healthcare workers who are concerned about going home. Um, so in that case, it might be several different people, might be three people, four people, 
uh, who are concerned about it sharing at once, or if if one person wanted wanted to do that, that would be fine too. That group would okay. share. Okay. One of okay because the more parties you have then the, the more cars you will have there and mr eschenbacher or mr riggs uh, <laughs> since they are going to this is not going to be a rental place anymore would that uh, grandfather status will be removed for depends the part they keep it depends if they keep up their uh, rental permit or not okay Okay. And one thing I want to make clear is they don't need 12 parking spaces for the bed and breakfast. The parking regulations okay. are one for each living or sleeping space. So uh, however many bedrooms okay. they have, that's how many spaces, parking spaces they need. Okay. So that's something you will figure out later on if yeah. this, this is approved. Okay. Okay. So this is going to be between the neighbors, the two neighbors. We can work out the issues with the parking. Uh, and um, the lady who was here, and I forgot her name, but uh, your testimony is on the record. So if something happens in the future, you can refer to it. Otherwise, uh, there is nothing else we, we are going to add in here. Any other questions, comments from the board? Uh, and finally, I didn't ask this one. Is there anyone who is opposing uh, for this to this proposal? Anyone opposing? John, Lisa has a question. Okay. So my question is for the appellants, and it's not. Um, it's really just out of curiosity. It doesn't really have anything to do with the um, the vote or anything. But I'm just wondering why you chose the idea of a bed and breakfast instead of a sort of traditional year yearly rental. And was it affected by the COVID or just, is there some reason that you want to move in the direction of uh, Airbnb? Basically a uh, flexibility. Um, there's so much up in the air right now um, yeah. about whether or not OU is going to come back. Uh, we would love the flexibility to be able to rent it out. We also think it's in a great location to serve the people on the West side, especially if uh, someone on the West side has family that, that wants to come in, uh, but they want to basically self quarantine and socially distant see each other. Having a, a an Airbnb there would be a great way to, to basically have them in the neighborhood close to other people. Um, and so, yeah, I guess flexibility is the, the, the biggest answer. Thank you. Okay, we need a proposal. Not, I'm sorry, a promo, uh, motion. Lisa, you seems that you're getting ready John, to- John, I can make the motion. Oh. Actually, Go I'm ahead. ready. Okay. I move that I move that the board grant a conditional use per permit to the property at 18 North Schaefer Street to allow a bed and breakfast use in a B1 zone as per ACC 230404B3. Do we have a second? I second, I second it. We all okay, I saw Lisa first, so we will go with Lisa. Um, Kay made the <laughs> motion, and Lisa second. All right, uh, we don't have the findings for this one, but I'm going to go to uh, 230702 Part E, uh, the conditionally permitted uses, uh, general provisions. The BCA may authorize the issuance of a conditional use permit in accordance with the following provisions. Number one, conditional uses for which a permit is issued are permitted in the zone. Uh, yes, that's true. They, they, they are permitted uh, in B1. So we are good there. Number two, each conditional use is considered as an individual case. I never understood what that is, but I guess it's okay. Number three, uh, the BZA shall find uh, the case conforms to the specific requirements required in each section and also these standards. A, the conditional use complies with all applicable city regulations. Code office, yes, no? Yes. Okay. Part B, the conditional use will be of such location, size, and character that it will generally be in harmony uh, with, the peer, with the appropriate and orderly development of the zone. It will not be detrimental to the orderly development of the adjacent properties, nor inconsistent with the city comprehensive plan. 
Mr. Eschenbacher? Well, I mean, uh, I think it's something the board should should vote on. It. My opinion is, yes, it does meet that. But, I mean, if the board has anything different to add. But in, my, okay. but in the opinion uh, of the code office, yes. Okay, good. And any members of the board have any comment on it? And finally, the ingress and egress from the parking area is to design to is so designed as to cause minimum interference from traffic on the building streets. And this is something that is a safety issue which we do not discuss. And I assume it will be taken care of. It right, Mr. Schumacher. Yes, and the way the parking is there now, I don't see how it could be done any better to improve traffic and stuff. It's just there on the alley. It is on an alley and they don't have a direct entrance onto the street. So in the code office's opinion, the parking is set up so as not to cause any problems. Okay, very good, very good. Uh, Aaron, are you still there? Yes, yes. Mr. Thomas. Yes. Okay, you're gonna be voting on this case, right? Yes. All right, um, I'm going to call the names and unmute your microphones. Uh, Mr. Cross? Yes. Uh, Mr. Thomas? Yes. Ms. Towsley? Yes. Ms. Carson? Yes. And I would yes as well. You have the variance, uh, not the variance, the conditional use permit, five to zero. And right. good luck Thank with you very much. it. Yeah, you're welcome. Well, we have in here the other business uh, disposition of minutes from June 9, 2020. I read it, it was fine. Did you guys read it too? Yes. Okay, let's make a motion to approve the minutes of June 9, 2020. I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes of June 9, 2020 meeting. Okay, and anyone uh, want a I second? Will second? I will second. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Anyone aye. opposing? No. Okay. And uh, I have a question for you, Mr. Eschenbacher. Are you still there? Yes. Um, to the best of my knowledge, you've been there for, what, 20 plus years as the secretary of the board, right? Tw about 20 years and two months, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I recall. I so said, that's how long I had been there. We had a different secretary before you were on, but then you came forward and volunteered, and you have been doing a great, great job. I understand that you will be retiring by the, at the end of this month. Yeah. Uh, I want to congratulate you, and thank you for all the services that you provided for us. You know, it's unbelievable. All the minutes that you wrote, all the deliveries of the packets that you made, uh, is above and beyond the call of duty. So I want to, on behalf of the board, uh, appreciate your services and also ask the members if they want to say something go ahead yeah am i still open lisa um yeah i just want to say that his knowledge uh well paul eschenbacher your your knowledge is immense and you've been a fabulous uh support all these years and we will miss you and i just want to extend the thought that if you find it necessary for your mental health to come back to the Board of Zoning Appeals <laughs> meetings. I, you know, I would really welcome you. Okay. Uh, one thing I want to suggest to the board, and I don't know how feasible it would be, but if you're looking for a new secretary, there used to be a position of board secretary. There used to be somebody who worked for the city who was the secretary for all the boards, oh. Shade Tree, Planning Commission, Housing Board, Zoning Board, and they used to take care of all the paperwork, all the minutes and stuff. Now we don't have that position now, but if you're having trouble finding someone to do my job, perhaps you could suggest to the mayor or to council that maybe that position should be recreated. Uh, at the code office, we would think that would be a, a very handy thing to have as that position. That way everything would be centralized and you'd have one person to worry about or go to as far as minutes or any of that. Whether the mayor will go for it or whether it's feasible or not, I don't know. But it's one suggestion for you guys. So, well, I appreciate it uh, very much. You know, we, we have done some 
minor discussions and, and then we'll find out more about it. Um, anyone else would like to say a word of appreciation for Mr. Reschenbacher? This is a good time. Congratulations. Paul, I would say, uh, so, sorry, Aaron. Paul, as a landlord in this town, I would say it has always been a pleasure to deal with you. We, Thank you. You have been fair and you'll be thoroughly missed by, by a lot of us. Okay. Good Thank luck you. in retirement. You, 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 earned, you earned it, sir. Okay. <laughs> Yes, I will. Um, there are many qualities that I could talk on at length uh, that I really appreciate, Paul, that you have and have uh, shown these many years. Uh, but one in particular that I appreciate is your patience with us and our occasional foolishness, our occasional lapses of memory. You've been just steady, <laughs> rock steady, never judging, always there. And thank you very much. I will miss you. Thank you. And I appreciate the job that you board members do. It is as close to a thankless job as you can get. Because the only time you hear about you being on the board is when people think you've screwed up. So <laughs> you do a good job. You approach these cases with practicality and common sense and as much objectivity as you can get. And that's exactly what's needed. So I appreciate the job you guys do, too. Thank you. Well, that might change because you are not there anymore because we were well, heavily relying on you, but, <laughs> but um, uh, I hope maybe someday you join as a member of the board beyond the zoning <laughs> board. Uh, then uh, we'll, we will select you as the chair and then we just stand back and well, so you let just, you do you all just the work. killed the whole thing by adding that the, the chairman <laughs> part so that's for me <laughs> um, okay if there is nothing else uh, we can uh, end this meeting and uh, also uh, if we want to see you in person uh, or maybe with a six foot distance are you still working at the code office yeah our office is closed, okay. so you can't come in, but you can come to the window and wave if you want. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, we'll do that. Okay. okay. All right. All right, maybe after uh, this COVID is over with, then we'll have call you and, and go out and have some dinner or lunch or something. Okay. Um, okay, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you all. Thank you.